Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If during this video you hear a bit of um, noise on the background, it's because the dishwasher is running. And uh, we don't have a door between the dishwasher and the living room, so we can hear that unfortunately. So, please see that no mind, try and ignore it. I'm sorry, I'll try and be mindful of it often in the future. But for now, I just get on with the video. So, a little while ago, I uploaded a video about the spotting on the leaves of my catacetum and how it could possibly be fertilizer burn. Well, as you can already see here, it probably wasn't fertilizer burn because we flushed it quite thoroughly and yet it's returned quite a lot. So here you see what the spotting kind of does to the leaf. And it really gets rid of all the texture. It's very thin here, the leaf. Very thin, very flexible. Clearly it's all dead. And then you can feel the clear divide between the living and the dead tissue here. Um, this leaf is definitely the worst. And you can see some of the spotting kind of goes ahead of the yellow slash brown coloration as you get over there. But like a lot of the leaves are affected. I think all of, are all of them affected? And this one isn't. This one isn't. And this one isn't. But all of the other ones are affected. So that's both gross at least. And either it has started going to dormancy or this leaf got affected so badly that it just dropped. Um, I'm thinking it's going to dormancy actually because uh, one way you can kind of tell, or so I've been told, is the color of these bracts basically, where it joins the leaf to the pseudobulb. If they're still kind of whitish, then it's usually in active growth. But if this turns sort of yellowish, that's when you know you're going into dormancy. Now here clearly it became yellow, but that's also because this has been affected for a while from sunburn. Um, but these are more... I don't know, it's more a yellow green than a white green at the moment, I feel. So that's one way you can see whether it's going to dormancy soon or not. Either way, that's not the topic of this video. The topic of this video is what's causing these markings on the leaf. And, you know, the good thing about calcium is that it drops its leaves after every growing season. So I'm not too worried about how it will look long term because it's just going to drop its leaves and grow new leaves next year. So that's not an issue. But I am worried about the health of this plant. I don't know why it keeps coming back after I've cut it out. So I don't think it's a bacterial infection. Because if it was a local bacterial infection, then it wouldn't return every time I've cut it. And I've cut it maybe four times now. And it's also coming back on different leaves at the same time. So it's something systematic. And the other thing I've been able to think of, or and what people have also told me, is that it could be a fungal infection that shows up at the leaf tips. So I have a antifungal spray, and here it is. So I got this one because it was the only one they had, and it's supposed to work. That's what the lady told me. I don't know anything about the use of fungicides and such things because I've never ever used them. Um, I don't even know quite what kind of compounds to look for, what kind of active ingredients. But this one, she said, should be safe for my plants. So I figured I'd just give it a shot. And if it doesn't work, I'll do some more research into it. But like, it's really not my favorite field of research. So I'm just gonna give it a go and hope this works. Okay, I'm on the side of my plant and now I guess I'll read through the instructions, um, which are in Italian. Or German or French, none of which I feel overly comfortable with. Okay, I'm gonna Google Translate all of this stuff and be right back. All right, I've translated the instructions and it says something along the lines of, you know, don't get it in your eyes, don't get it on your skin, etc. So I've got my nice pink gloves. And it also says something that's at odds with what the lady at the store said that I bought it from. She told me to spray five days in a row. And the instructions here say to spray it once very thoroughly, especially on the side of the leaves, and then use it again two or three weeks later, and a maximum of four times per year. So I'm gonna go with the instructions rather than the lady, because I'm assuming the manufacturers know what they're talking about. And I'm just going to spray it once very thoroughly, especially on the side of the leaves, and then check back in about two to three weeks and see whether it solved the problem or not. Okay. So I managed to take it down to a fine spray. Now I'm just gonna drench this entire plant as well as I could. I should have not worn slippers maybe. I'm just gonna stand properly on top of it. Okay, I now 
to hold it upside down for a bit so I can properly spray the other side of the leaves which is not a problem because it's very well established in this pot oh, sorry off camera my bad Okay, well, I think that's pretty well drenched, wouldn't you say? So now I'm just going to leave it out here so it can dry properly in the outside air. And I'm going to go back inside and wash off my gloves. And now we just wait for it to dry and then we'll check back and cut off the ends of the infection again. And we'll see again in a week or two whether it's worked or not. I hope it has worked this time because I'm really not quite sure what it is. This is not normal leaf tip dieback. But... Either way, it doesn't seem to be overly impacting off the plant as long as it does get kind of contained to the tips. So I'm still not overly worried, but I'm still quite interested to know what it is. So if any of you have an idea, do let me know. And I'm sorry if I wasn't always spraying in the field of vision, because it's my first time using fungicide, so I was a little bit anxious about it, so to say. I, I wanted to make sure I was doing it right and spraying it in the correct distance and not on myself and other things. So I probably didn't spray it perfectly for you viewers but hopefully you saw enough it's not rocket science after all you have a spray you squeeze it it comes out and to finish off this video i thought i'd just show you how my new plants are doing so unfortunately the venosa is already dropping its flowers which is very soon but i'm not worried because i know the cause which is that when i came home i saw that the pollen caps had been rubbed off by the paper that was covering the flowers and uh, as you might know, if the pollen cap gets removed from the tip of the flower here, the column, then the plant stops pumping energy into the plant because the function of the flower has been fulfilled. It's been pollinated or it has been, or its pollen has been taken to pollinate another flower. Either way, uh, the genes have been carried across somewhere else. So it starts to draw back the energy from the flowers and it drops them. So that's a bit unfortunate because I've only been and able to enjoy these plants for about, that's about five days. So that's not great. And the other thing is that the Lindeni has dropped a bloom, which might just be because of the change in the environment, but it's also opened a new bud. Unfortunately, it's facing downwards, which I'm, I'm, it happens more often with my plants. And I'm a bit confused about that because the light never comes from downwards and it's supposed to turn towards the light, right? So I keep expecting it to just turn towards the window like this but it doesn't so if anyone out there has a tip for me how to avoid these blooms from opening facing down and judging from how this one is looking now it's also going to face down which is a bit of a shame then do please let me know because i'm very interested to know how to improve this display but all in all i'm still very happy with these two guys i really like the foliage on this plant it's so pretty with the silver and the spotting I need more like these, these tiny ones with the nice spotting. This is wonderful. So thank you for watching. If you can give me any advice on the problem that the Catacetum is having, or if you can give me any advice on how to make these flowers turn the right way, then please let me know. I'm very interested to hear back from you. And I'll see you again next time. Thank you for watching. Bye, guys.